update. My deceased wife's parents are trying to take my children. Original story. I was married to Kate for almost 16 years, together nearly 20. She was the absolute light of my life, and the center of my world. And her death has been devastating to both me and our three children. 17 female, 14 male, 10 male. Our family was very close, and her death was unexpected. We are estranged from Kate's parents. She was already no contact with them when we first met, and we continued keeping no contact with them. They attempted pretty often to get in contact with us, and Kate and I always shut it down immediately. We were in no contact with them because they were incredibly, incredibly horrible to Kate growing up. They don't accept responsibility for their actions. They say they were just confused kids and didn't mean for anything serious to happen to Kate. But something serious did happen to Kate. Kate suffered from seizures from a traumatic brain injury she got at her mother's hands, and it was a seizure that killed my wife three weeks ago. So I rest the blame for my wife's death squarely on her parents' shoulders. Since she passed away, her parents have begun harassing me, saying that they're owed a relationship with their grandchildren. I say I don't owe them crap, and continue to deny them requests, throw away the letters, donate the gifts, just like Kate had always done. Now, I've been sent a letter that they're suing for grandparents' rights. I am terrified. I'm terrified that my in-laws are going to get their hands on my children and take them away from me in the wake of the traumatic death of their mother. Am I doing the right thing by keeping distance from her parents? I've turned everything over to the lawyer, but I'm wondering if this is the right thing to do. All three kids are in therapy even before their mother's death. The older two kids know some details of the relationship between Kate and her parents, but not the entire story. Now for the top advice before reading the update. Yes, you are doing the right thing. Also, get a lawyer. They shouldn't be able to take them, actually. They may have a Hail Mary chance, though. Some states have a grandparents' rights loss for visitation. Sadly, for situations similar to this. The loss are four, in the event of a parent's death, the surviving parents going AWOL and depriving the deceased parent's family slash grandparents with access to the children. In theory, the situation is similar to Opie's case, except the deceased parent was no contact before their death and clearly didn't want the grandparents near their family. Couldn't imagine a court granting them, but crap, if they get the right judge on the right day? I think they need to have an established relationship with the kids to qualify, though. And only listen to what your lawyer says, because you owe them nothing and their feelings aren't a concern. I doubt they would advise you to start contact. Also, r slash legal advice. Lawyer here. They won't be able to take rights away from him. Unless Opie is lying, most, if not all states, prioritize bioparents' rights over grandparents, even when bioparent is in jail or substance dependent. The worst that can happen is visitation, but... They have not had continuous contact with these children prior to his wife's untimely and devastating death. So, I don't know how they'll even get visitation. Opie, it's clear you're in a lot of pain and stressed out. But they really don't have a leg to stand on. Stand your ground. They have no claim to these children. In most states, grandparents' rights are set up for if there is a messy relationship and one parent dies, the other parent cannot keep the children away from that side of the family which is not what's happened from your description. Based on the history as well, even for visitation she has no case, depending on your location. She hasn't had a relationship with them ever, so there wouldn't be a loss of relationship now that your wife is deceased. But, have a very serious talk with your kids about this. Older kids get more info, obviously, since grandparents could reach out to them directly to manipulate their way into a relationship. And now for the update. A year ago, I came asking advice as my deceased wife's parents were trying to take custody of my three children. I want to thank everyone for the advice they gave us. Someone commented about an FU binder and that came in so, so handy to fight against these horrific people. It was a really long nine-month battle. I got to know the CPS officers and our night shift police officers on a first-name basis. They reported me for mistreating my children, my dogs, even for breaking into my neighbor's house. In the heat of it, I gathered my kids with our family therapist and asked if they wanted to move. Our house had so many good memories, but also one big terrible memory. I don't like to think of it as running away or hiding, but as the freshest slate we could manage. We're in an entirely different state now, with no contact orders in place to protect us in the future. We miss Kate more than words could ever convey, 
but we're all together still, and that's the most important part. Good thing you were able to get past them. They're terrible human beings by doing all these things to you and your kids. They alienated themselves from their grandkids by what they've done to them. All the best. I often wonder how evil people exist. Like, I can't fathom sitting around lying just to lie. Do they believe this ugliness? I'm so glad you got away from these awful demons posing as people. Sending light. You would be so surprised what people will do when someone dies. Their evil sides are quickly revealed. My uncle drank himself to death, and my aunt found him. She stole the rings off his hands and all the money in his wallets before calling my dad and the cops. People can be worst when someone dies. Wow, what a horrific story. I'm a dad who ended up with a custody away from a very troubled mother, so this story resonated with me as I fought long and hard to keep custody. I've had custody for 16 years, and every challenge has been thrown out, but I always fear that one whacked out judge on a bad day, so I can totally relate to the fear. I'm so glad to hear how this has worked out. I wish you the best, just want to post a little empathetic ear. As sad as your story is, you've done the right thing. Thanks for posting, Opie. I'm glad you're now moving on. I feel terrible for contacting you, and I'm just wondering if you can provide any tips, looking back at what has helped you rebuild. Unfortunately, I have a similar story, albeit a little different. My sister is in her very late stages of her life after fighting cancer for eight years. It has been an emotional roller coaster during this time, and whilst we knew this day was coming, it's cutting a lot harder than we first thought. To top things off, my sister's husband, my brother-in-law, could not take this pain and ended his life in January of this year. Despite what he did and knowing my sister doesn't have long days, like your kids, she and him leave behind three children. So literally as I type, I write to you grieving for my sister. But I have to now prepare to take on guardianship of her three children too. They are twin 16 years old and a 10 years old. And by the month's end, they'll have lost both parents. My immediate family is very close. Financially, we are okay too. But I have three kids falling into my guardianship having going through grief that no one deserves. I'm not really sure what to do. Everything is falling into place. And I'm terribly sorry for making this about me. Especially when you've already gone through hell and back. Next story. How do I start a relationship with my nieces and nephew when their father was responsible for my brother's passing? One of my employees mentioned that this may be a good place to get some advice from my current dilemma. I'm 46 male and one of four kids. My older brother Pete, 48 male I think, who I no longer have any contact with, my younger brother Jake who is no longer with us, and my youngest sister Kathy, 44 female. Recently, Pete's children, two girls and one boy, all in their late teens and early 20s, reached out to me and expressed a desire to have a relationship. I have zero contact with their father and swore that I would beat him black and blue if I ever saw him again. A little background. My oldest brother Pete was always the golden child. No matter what he did, my parents always had an excuse for why it was not his fault. Bad grade? Teacher had it out for him. Cheating in every single one of his relationships. Good thing you did it to her before she did it to you. That one was my personal favorite. He also used to torment Jake and I constantly when we were smaller than him. Until in high school, when I had a growth spurt and sprung up to about 6 foot 4 and 230 pounds worth of muscle. After that, I became the typical jock type. Played football, partied, bunch of friends, etc. Well, my younger brother Jake didn't get as lucky, and stayed pretty small and scrawny throughout high school and college, only getting up to about 5 foot 8 and didn't have a super active social life. Despite the difference in our schooling experience, I was always very protective of Jake, especially since we were always having to put up with Pete's crap, which stopped once he realized I could pound him into the ground and not break a sweat as he was also a lot smaller than me at only 5'10". Not much to say about Kathy. She was a great younger sister, and Pete didn't dare mess with her or he would incur the wrath of our mother. So in the late 90s, Jake met his first real girlfriend, Amy, and was over the moon about her. He spent every spare moment with her, and when he wasn't with her, he would do nothing but gush about her. I had never seen him so happy. Well, one day he comes to us, all smiles, and announces that Amy is pregnant and they are expecting. The mood quickly turned, however, when a week later it came out that Amy had been cheating on Jake for the duration of their relationship with our older brother Pete. This broke my brother. 
And of course, Pete being the golden turd that he is, didn't even get a disappointed glance from our parents. To this day, I've never seen someone look so broken as Jake had looked the last time I saw him. I believe his heartache was only compounded by the fact that my parents basically told him to get over it and be happy for our brother. Well, about a week after this revelation came to light, he ended himself. He had never been so sad and angry at the same time in my entire life. Sad that I would never see my brother again, and the pure rage of knowing that this was my brother and parents' fault. During the funeral, Pete walked in with Amy and I saw Red. Thankfully, I had other family there to stop me from doing anything stupid, but I told Pete that if I ever saw him again, I would kill him. Shortly after that, I cut contact with 90% of my family, with the exception of Kathy and cousin I had always been close with, because everyone except them wanted to make excuses for my parents and Pete. Now fast forward to present, I never had any kids, and truth be told, I never wanted any. I much prefer the role of the fun uncle. Kathy met a great guy and had two daughters, who I absolutely adore. Pete had two more kids with Amy before cheating on her, shocker, and splitting and have never met any of them. My parents have tried to make contact a handful of times, but I always told them to kick rocks. So last week I'm chatting with Kathy's daughters, 19 and 17, and they mentioned that their cousins have wanted to meet me for a long time, and were hoping I would be willing to meet them as well. I don't believe they know everything that transpired between their dad and I, but I would be lying if I said I never had any desire to meet them. So everyone, I'm hoping to crowdsource any ideas slash suggestions on how I begin slash maintain a relationship with Pete's kids while also keeping him and Amy out of my life. Any suggestions are welcome. Edit. One commenter just brought up a good point that kind of changes my question. The reason I wanted to meet with them soon is because they are all back in town at once from college due to COVID. But someone gave me the idea that maybe meeting them one at a time once they return to their college campuses slash old living arrangements is the better option. Thoughts? I've had multiple people ask me why Kathy still talks with the people I cut contact with. So I'll just copy-paste one of my replies here. Even though my sister was just as crushed about Jake's death as I was and was angry for a long time, she and her then-boyfriend, future husband, hit a financial rough patch after graduating college and were forced to move in with our parents. Due to unrelated drama at the time, they couldn't stay with me. So my sister stayed with them for several years, and over that time, their relationship improved. And even though I wasn't thrilled at the time, I understood. She still doesn't really have a relationship with Pete, but is cordial if they meet. I don't blame her, because our parents did a lot for her, and daughters love their cousins. So I didn't want to put her in that kind of position of choosing. Now for the advice. Did you already ask Kathy's daughters if their cousins know the truth? Since it is very important for you, then maybe Kathy's daughters could help you figure it out as they seem to be in a good relationship with them. They've told me that they haven't mentioned anything to them but said it was clear that they were at least vaguely aware. Like they know we are estranged regarding our brother's death, but not sure if they have the details. Make it a prerequisite that they be told the truth about their parents for you to have any relationship with them. I think the situation needs to be handled with care. I don't think there's any harm in meeting them, but you do need to be clear with them that you have no intention of seeing or interacting with their father. From your earlier comment, it sounds like the kids are all adults. But since they're still living with their father, it might be best to hold off on the specifics of why you won't talk to their dad until they're a bit more independent. Your brother definitely sounds like the type that would blame you for turning his kids against him, and knowing the truth could make their lives more difficult while they're still under his roof. Those were my thoughts as well. I'm sure one of their first questions for me is going to be why their father and I don't speak, and given their living situation, I'm not sure if it would be good for them to know that information while still under his roof. If they ask, just tell them that you're not comfortable discussing it with them yet. And that when you are, you let them know. Don't have a relationship with those kids unless it's going to be based on honesty. Your older brother is, indeed, largely responsible for the needless death of your younger brother. I have no words for your parents. Your estranged brother's children played no role in your brother's death, so relationship with them, to a point, becomes possible. However, I don't know how you can have a relationship with them unless they know the truth. It's time for your older brother and your parents to own their dishonesty and dysfunction. I'm so sorry for your heartache, Hiropi. Last story is titled, 
my 19 male, half-sister 17 female, isn't happy my father won't sponsor her college. My half-sister is two years younger than me. She is a rising senior and will be entering college in fall 2022. My half-sister's parents are essentially broke. This is because my mother is very ill and a lot of their expenses go towards her treatment. My half-sister's dad pays for all her medical bills and mine does not. My mom left my dad while she was pregnant with me and soon fell in love with half-sister's dad. While the timing is close, there was no cheating. My dad didn't pay for my mom because he didn't care about her anymore. I don't think it was wrong for that and he got majority custody when she fell ill. My dad is rich and he is paying for my education. My sister and dad are pretty close because he babysat her a lot. She asked him if he'd pay for her college and he said no. She got really upset because she got into a decent school but cost a fair amount of money. The money wouldn't even dent my dad's bank, but he refused because he never saw her as his responsibility. Now my half-sister wants me to convince my dad to help her pay for college. What the hell is this post? If your ex who left you 20 years ago has another kid with someone else, you're not responsible for paying for them to go to college. At all. People are weird AF. More like some Americans are entitled AF. What did I just read? His responsibilities to his child, you, just like all parents. Your sister's parents are responsible for her. Sorry, someone had to say that. It's crazy how some of the comments think the dad should help. He's not an ATM. Exactly. He's nice to her, which is good enough considering what her mom did. It sucks she'll have to work through to get uni, but if she chooses an in-state school, it won't be that bad, honestly. It's one thing to help out your ex and make sure your child has a good relationship with her half-siblings. It's quite another to pay for a child's college education that isn't yours. Your half-sister is not being realistic. Even though it would not make a dent in your dad's financial situation, he's not her dad. If her parents can't afford to send her to college, there are grants, scholarships, and loans. She needs to talk to her school counselor and see what kind of help she can get.